Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. So to make the situation more calm, because we do have a lot of people here, it would just be nice if you guys could leave, but we are, I can't what do we do? guys. I have no idea. I'm not in the situation, but um, she, like, just like to make it more calm, she said, like, you guys can look calm leave because we do have a lot of people around, or the police will be out there, because they are. So. But why do we have to leave? We just came to order food. Yeah, of course. I don't understand, like, what, what do we do? I, I don't know. <clears throat> That's not right, man. Like, like uh, we, we, we were planning on leaving, but we wanted to wait for the police to get here because we wanted her name. Yeah, she didn't want to give us her name. Because we want to submit a complaint. Okay. She doesn't, she refused yeah, to give us her name. Yeah, she doesn't have to give her name. She had, but she works here, right? We we're expecting for, we waiting for a manager. Right? Okay, yeah. Do they have a well, manager? Well, um, did you guys do anything? No, we don't have a manager in today. They're all off because they've been working so like all week. Leave, so if we leave, if I leave and the police get here, mm -hmm. she could just come up and say anything. I'm trying to rob them. Yeah, 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 no. um, so like, did you guys do anything to disturb her or disturb any customers? No, when she, no, when she walked by, yes. I, had, I, I said, excuse me, because it yeah. seemed like she was, you know. Oh, well, yeah, it's really busy today. No, obviously. Yeah. So, you know, I said, excuse me, because he's been sitting here for 15 minutes. Yeah, of course. So, you know, when she left, she came back with the minions. And she yeah. said, well, I don't want to be yelled at. Yeah. And I said, I didn't yell at you. I was you sick. Yeah, I was like, Can we talk outside real quick? Yo, what's going on? Can we talk outside real quick? All right, just outside here. Wow. That's crazy. They're refusing to serve us. That's crazy. That's crazy. They're refusing to serve us. We have the victims of that discrimination on the show today. Thank you, gentlemen, for being on the program. I wish it was under better circumstances. We have Damon Whitfield and also Hector Madera, both Thank truck you. drivers. Thank you for both for contacting us at Indisputable. Um, and when I saw this video, my producer sent me this video. Um, and I looked at the long form of the video. I said, they literally sent, or the person literally sent a proxy waitress to tell you all that there would be no service. But there already was no service at this Denny's in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Dennis has now responded. I will read the response in just a moment. Uh, but gentlemen, it, it, you know what was going through your mind when this was happening in real time? Uh, and I will start with Hector. I mean, to be honest, it was uh, it was just unexpected. It's just something that uh, we were we weren't ready for. I was, I surely wasn't ready. You know, uh, we went in there, you know, wanting to place orders just like. Any other place, you know, you go to, you walk into, you know, you walk into a place to place an order, and uh, you know, I was just, we were just blindsided by it, you know. Um, I, I'm still, you know, I'm still trying to, you know, gather my thoughts and trying to gather myself over how it went down, and you know, just the feeling of uh, anxiety that I still feel from that, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I walk into these places, and now I wonder, you know. Am I going to be submitted? Are we going to be submitted to these same, you know, things again? Like, so, you know, it's 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 definitely uh, it's uh, it's a shame. Yeah. You know, it's uh, you know, they kind of like I feel as though like, you know, they took a piece from us that day. You know, they took from us something that we can't get back. You know, which is. You know, you know, it's kind of degrading. You know, you know, they they robbed us. They try to rob us of our humility, and you know, just dignity and and self worth and respect. You know, I believe it's unfair, and I just want these, I want I want them to be held accountable. Simply put, uh, and I agree with you. Uh, and let me ask, and, and this was really interesting. I'm going to go to um, Damon. Damon, the waitress who started this whole thing. Not the proxy waitress who delivered the message, but according to Dennis, that waitress has been fired by that local franchise owner. Um, what went through your mind when this was happening? And can you also tell us about 
the alleged connection between the original waitress that was racist and did not serve you all and the owner of that pilot um, gas station. Okay, so we came in originally to you know get something to eat like its own video and um, we basically, I sat down first, Hector was in the shower. I um she gave me the two menus and the orange juice. This is what you don't see on the video. So yeah. I'm waiting. Um and I didn't you know, racism is the last thing on my mind. Yeah, we're the only black people there. Um so she's handling other customers, um, customers that came in after us, she's taking their orders, seating them and things like that. So basically she um she would walk by the table and she would look down and keep going. It was kind of weird, you know. But um, I just felt like maybe she was, uh, you know, just giving us time to decide what we want, or maybe uh she forgot. You know, people are human. You know, I figured. You know, we go to restaurants all the time, and and you know things like that happen. So uh, what a time goes by. Hector comes out of the shower. He sits down because he told me, you know, um, just text me, you know, just get me whatever you're gonna get. He texted that to me to to do that. So I'm like, okay. And then uh, he asked me when he got back. He's like, you know, did uh, did did, did you place the order yet? So I'm like, no, I think she might have forgot about us. So then he goes, you know, um, excuse me, you know, we're we're ready to place our order. And she goes, um. I don't like you yelling uh, at me. He didn't yell. He wasn't rude. Nobody was um, out of the ordinary. And then he goes, I just wanted to say we're ready to place our order. And then she goes, well, I don't need you people calling me over to this table like that. So I'm I'm looking at the menu and I'm thinking that maybe she leaned over to basically, you know, take his order. But I'm not processing what she's saying at the time. So I'm like, you know, I had him like, did she just say what I thought she said? And then he was like, yeah, but I, you know, and then after that, he said, you know, but I, I saw that you serving other people and we just want to let you know that we're ready to place our order. Because like we said, we're not thinking racism or anything like that. Right. So then she goes, um, I, you know what? I'm not serving you people. Um, you need to get your stuff now and go. I'm calling the police. And then she snatches the menus out of our hands. But she snatched mine out of my hand and she snatched the menu out of Hector's hand and then she snatched the orange juice off the table, spilling some of it off of me. And then she walks to the to the back where the cook is and then I see her on the phone and I'm just assuming like maybe she's calling the police. So me and Hector are looking at each other like what in the heck just happened? You know, so he's like, you know what, let me go over to the waitress. You know, maybe this is, a, this is a misunderstanding. Let me go and apologize. And I'm like, no, don't go and apologize. You didn't do anything. So he goes over there and he's like, you know, excuse me. You know, uh, maybe we got off on the wrong foot. You know, I just want to apologize if there's any misunderstanding. We just want to place an order. And she goes, no, there's no misunderstanding. I want you people out. The cops are on their way. So then he comes back to me and he goes, you know, let's, bro, let's just leave. And I'm like, no, we're not leaving. Let's stay right here. And I said, let me ask the other waitress if maybe she can help us and take our order, which is the one that's on the video. And I said, you know, excuse me, miss, can you take our order? And then she says, unfortunately, um, we can't serve you. Um, and then she goes into what she says on the video, you know, um, unfortunate, you know, could you not be a disturbance to the customers and, you know, whatever she said, you know? Um, wow. But uh, it's just, it's just, um, sorry. Talk about this connection also, the, the pilot um, gas station, somebody, a manager or the owner okay. offered you something afterwards. Right, so the manager, so this, so the, the, the lady, uh, I was told, is the district manager's wife. I'm not uh, sure how true that is, okay. but that's what the, that's what the, Pilot. So there's a there's that manager and then there's the assistant manager for pilot. I don't want to um you know, say any names or anything, but he was very helpful. He said, you know, he saw after we spoke to the cops, he came up to us because he saw that we were upset, and he was like, um, you know, what happened? I said they don't want us in there. They kicked us out, and he was like, what for? I said they they don't want. All right, we had a technical issue back, um, Damon, in just a minute. Let me do this, I wanna read the statement from Denny's. 
if we can put that statement up, I want to read partial, the partial statement um, on air. <clears throat> so you can find this full statement um, online. It says Denny's is committed to a culture of inclusion and service excellent of all guests. We conducted a thorough third party investigation into the incident at the Denny's location in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. As a result of the investigation, the franchise owner immediately took decisive action and the employee is no longer with the company. <clears throat> Denny's maintains a strict zero tolerance policy when it comes to any form of discrimination. We acknowledge there were opportunities to improve the service level in this specific situation. We maintain our commitment to ongoing training and development of all staff. The employees at the location will immediately go through a dedicated training program to ensure the team delivers above and beyond our guest expectations. We regret this incident and want to apologize to the guests involved. Clearly, we fell short of our standards, our own standards that day and are committed to making it right. Let me go to Hector, all right? Um, when you hear that statement from Denny's corporate, uh, what's your response to that? Um, I believe that, uh, you know, more needs to be done. You know, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, it's 2023. We've made many years, we've had many years of progress as far as like race relations and stuff like that. But, you know, you look at an instance like this and you just wonder, you know, how far have we gotten? Um, I feel like as far as firing the wait the waitress that that should have been done immediately you know that should have been handled right there at that location you know we we try to handle it right there you know with management you can see the there was no management supposedly um we try to re we reached out to corporate and uh we didn't have any sort of uh we didn't get any feedback until you aired it you know, until you, you you put it on your platform, which we appreciate and we're thankful of. Because outside of that, had it not been for, you know, you putting it out there, it would have just been swept under the rug. You know, and I feel like it's just a half, it's a half apology. It's not, you know, more needs to be done. You know, uh, uh, then it needs to be held accountable and, and, you know, it's just so much. To my understanding, um, once again, they do want to talk. Uh, they have reached out. They've made an apology, at least on record. Uh, and you gentlemen are not going to have that conversation until uh, you have an attorney with you in the room, which I concur. Uh, I think that's exactly the approach. Let me go uh, to you, Damon, and ask you when the cop came, because we see one officer, we don't know how many officers were there. But when that mm -hmm. cop came and told you all, let's go outside and talk. One, what was going through your mind? Because see, that's a dangerous situation. Uh, cops come, black men, there's a narrative that likely is false against you, uh, number one. Number two, they're telling you to walk outside. What was said in that conversation with the police officer? Well, the so as we're walking out, we're, we, I'm, I'm trying to explain to people because they're looking at us like we must have done something wrong. And I'm like trying to explain to them like, you know, um, they they refusing to serve us. You can hear me in the video saying that. And then I'm looking for someone to stand up and and uh, say something or stand up for us because like. And then I turn around. I even turn around to the cop because I figured maybe he didn't know either. Like they they refusing to the serve us. And then he was like, you know, right this way, like you know, outside. So it kind of felt like like one of those uh like we're in the, one of those towns in the movies where it's like a racist town and and um we're being walked out by like some executioners or something like that and i'm like and, and we were afraid because we weren't we were, we didn't know what type of police were on their way we're, we're in an all-white restaurant with a, wait, a racist um waitress that that called the cops on us she endangered our lives by calling the police you know you don't call police unless there's a crime we didn't commit a crime we weren't belligerent we weren't um, disturbing no customers like this lady, you know, tried to say or ask or whatever. And, um, you know, when we got out and, and we explained it to the cops what, what had happened, they were 
like um trying their best to help us actually they were saying you know um the the, the first cop was saying no oh, i'm gonna go inside and see if i can get some information and he got the table number for for the lady that was waiting on us because she didn't want to give her name and then um the the other cop was trying to say, you know, you know, the, the situation with uh, what happened to him. And then he said, you know, we're sorry for, you know, what happened to you because he knows, you know, he knows what happened. Yeah. You know, he knows what it is. You know, that is so ironic, isn't it? That the responding police officers, once they heard the full story, right? They have more sympathy, empathy for your situation than seemingly the local store, the local Denny's. Yes. Um, and I think it's important for everyone to note, these gentlemen literally reached out multiple times to resolve this administratively at the local and corporate level. So it's not as if this happened and all of a sudden they contacted Indisputable. Uh, they contacted Indisputable when there was no movement, no response uh, appropriate to what happened in that video. Uh, Naturally, there's going to be an update to this when you all do meet with Denny's and they either make a move that is to your satisfaction or they do not make a move to your satisfaction. Um, I hope they don't do that. Um, I would definitely cover it if they do. But what would you like to see happen? And, and Hector, I want to ask you first, what would you like to see happen? Or maybe is, it, is there a general uh, framework you would like to see Denny's engage in to make this right by you all? Um, first of all, you know, uh, I would expect for there to be some sort of sincere or more sincere public apology. You know, we were embarrassed, we were humiliated uh, in front of many people. You know, it's gonna affect me and and Damon. You know, later on down the road, in many ways, um, absolutely, they need to be held accountable. Um, like I said, we're in a process of uh, speaking with legal advisors. We're definitely in the process of filing a civil civil complaint. I mean, I'm sorry, a civil lawsuit. And uh, you know, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to you know try to put together in yeah. words. But hopefully, you know, we we get a good result from this. We have a good result from this. And I, I want to echo something you said, Heck. I'm going to go to Damon for the question. Um, this has had real impact on your life. So not only not only in that moment do you have to experience that level of degradation. Beyond that moment, there's this public response. Now, uh, obviously, people like myself and many many others they see it for what it is. Even at least one of the officers could see it for what it for what it was at that moment. But you also have individuals. On social media, saying some really, really horrible things about you two gentlemen, um, and these elements exist in our social construct. So, Damon, I want you to speak to that. What has the experience been like from those on social media who have been adverse to the reality that you uh, and Hector were treated unfairly inside of this Denny's? I want everybody who's watching to put your or shoes, you know, anybody of any race, if you go into a, a establishment and you're the only person of your race there, you in the back of your mind, nobody talks about this, but in the back of your mind, you're like, um, you're, you're wondering if you're going to be treated unfairly or, or whatever the case is. So, you know, it takes courage just to go, just to walk through the door of a place like that. You know, we walked in there not thinking anything and, um, you know, and and then this happened. We were so stunned. I didn't have time to record the first waitress because we were just nobody pulls out their phone to record uh, when you're about to take an order to at a restaurant. Like I don't. You know, I feel like I have to practice a, a, a recording draw on my phone or something. Like you know, and it's like, um, you know, when when it happened, it was just we were just in total shock. It's unpredictable and it can happen anytime and anywhere. And as far as the training goes, I don't, I, you know, I, I know that's what companies do and stuff like that. They want to more training, more training. You can't train a racist. You know, if a racist is a racist, that's deep rooted. So you, you just have to do your background check and make sure that they don't have anything 
coming into that company because they you you can train them. You're just going to have a trained racist working for you. You know, and it's just going to happen again. And I feel like as far as the apology goes, um, you say sorry too many times, it starts to lose its value. You know, this happened how many times with with Denny's? I, I didn't even know this until this happened. And people told me that this happened before. And I'm like, you know, they say zero tolerance. How is that zero tolerance? And it happened multiple times. We're, they have a racist resume. Like, we're part of this resume now. You know, you do make a really, really interesting point about the reality of that training. Uh, and we contextualize a fix as, well, everybody's going to go through training. And I know corporate has to say that, right? They got to say things like that. But um, everybody didn't do it and it was still allowed. That, that's a culture, in my opinion. It's not about the action of one, it's about the action of those who permitted the one mm. to do so. That speaks more so to culture. Um, we definitely will have you gentlemen back. I'm sorry you went through this. Obviously, you have an advocate in me and everyone uh, who supports uh, platforms of truth. Uh, we all support both of you, you fine, stand, upstanding gentlemen, and I'm glad that you are able to turn the narrative so that you no longer have to be defensive. You don't have to explain yourself. We got a video, we know what happened, we got your back. Um, any <laughs> words for uh, Dennis before we part? And, and I will say this, the VP of Dennis reached out. I, I talked about this last week, um, her name is April. She seems to be a very nice, sweet and authentic individual. Uh, unfortunately, this is just a very bad situation that Dennis is in. And I highly encourage Denny's to respond in an affirmative way to make whole you two gentlemen. And by extension, make whole the black communities that produced you. All right, what uh, words have been into Denny's? For me, I would say, you know, uh, we appreciate April for extending her apologies and on behalf of Denny's. Um, Denny's need, they need to do better, Yeah, you know? They need to do better. More needs to be done, and uh, got it. They got a lot of work ahead of them. Damon, I feel like uh, Danny's. Uh, the, you know, the, not to go off the topic, but the, the the vice, the president of Pilot called me as soon as he heard what happened, and he apologized before the president of Denny's. And I respected that. He said what he's going to do, and he's going to make sure that this didn't happen again. And um, you know, when I when I got the apology from April, I mean, I, I remember, I, you know, I told you that it was a hollow apology. I'm not saying that she was um, mean. She was very nice and sweet and disrespectful at the same time because she was, you know, doing she was doing a lot of multitasking while she was apologizing to me. And I and I felt like, you know, um, this is a tense serious situation and this is the apology that I got. No disrespect to her, but at the same time, I acknowledge her apology, but I don't, the, my heart doesn't accept it. So, I mean, going forward, in order for this to not happen again, I don't, I, you know, they have to figure this out because it's, 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 this is, this is, they're like repeat offenders, you know, and, and I just wanted to stop here with this, this, I want this to be the last case of that. Well said. Gentlemen, Thank I you. appreciate both of you. Thank you for coming on the show. We'll give an update. Uh, keep in touch with us. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having us. Thank you for giving Thank us you so much. Place. Appreciate you giving us your platform, for, you know, giving us That's a chance to speak our story. Thank you. That's what it's for, I appreciate, brothers. I appreciate you both.